So guess what? We have two more types of loops. And you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, I just learned about the while loop. Why are you throwing more my way? Well, again, we're talking about the control flow. We're talking about a way we can control our program. And so one of those now is we have something called the do while loop. The do while works very similar to a while loop. A while loop, you could say, runs a while loop runs zero to an infinite number of times. Now a do while, a do while is going to run explicitly once to an infinite number of times. And if we take a look at the code, we can see kind of that in action. We see, first we say do in curly brace. Notice there's no conditional statement over here. There's no if uh, situation here. Now, again, what happens is we do this, we do this line of code, we get down here, we get to the end, that's when the conditional statement actually gets evaluated. If it's true, then we go back up, else we go back down. And you can kind of see here's that diagram with it, you know, we do some action first, then we assess whether it's true or not. All right, guess what, like I said, we had two of these. So we also have something known as the for loop. Now, while loops and do loops are considered indeterminate. And it's because they can run an infinite number of times. Think about high-low. What happens if my user just kept on wanting to play? You just love the fact that uh, you're, you're playing that number guessing game, just having a just gay old time. Well, I don't know how many times the user is going to play the game. So in theory, it's indeterminate. A for loop, on the other hand, a for loop is going to run explicitly n times, n being uh, some number you specify. And it is considered determinant because as again it runs explicitly how long you tell it to run so how does it work all this stuff all of a sudden looks crazy going on here the way you can think about it is you start with a block a semicolon a block a semicolon a block so you know if that mnemonic kind of helps you out a little bit we're looking at it in the sense that this first thing this first part happens before the loop begins. So you can think of it like the do while. Uh, this happens first. This happens, then we assess whether or not to continue running the loop. It's gonna run X number of times based on this. We then have something known as my iteration action. Now that $5 word there, iteration. Iteration is just the way we can talk about cycling through a loop. So if I wanna run through this loop, in this case, uh, 10 or 11 times, at the end of every loop, at the end of the loop, let me just add this guy right here. Mm-hmm. At the end of the loop, explicitly do this guy. Change my color to, there we are. Explicitly do I plus plus. Always at the end of the loop, right before we go back to our for loop. 